Thanks for joining Info Live TV for Thursday, February 7th. I'm Eli Shah Rabin. The Israeli government says it will cut electricity it provides to Gaza by 5% every week until Hamas stops firing Qassam rockets into Israel. A Palestinian rights group challenged the measure before the high court, but the court sided with the government. It said Israel has not been responsible for the welfare of Gaza since withdrawing from the territory in September 2005. The groups had argued Israel was breaking international law by collectively punishing the Palestinians for the Qassam rocket attacks. The High Court responded, saying that Hamas is breaking every international law possible as it assaults Israel's civilians. Electricity cuts will start next week. A threat from the Egyptians, the foreign ministry told Palestinians it will, quote, break the legs of anyone who tries to enter Egypt illegally. The statement comes after increased frustration with the Palestinians for their actions against the Egyptians. Earlier in the week, Hamas coerced Palestinians to throw stones at Egyptian border patrols. The patrols responded with fire, killing one. Egypt has called Hamas childish for launching rockets into Israel, saying the assault simply give Israel a reason to retaliate. And retaliate Israel did. Hamas launched seven Qassam rockets into southern Israel today. One of the rockets hit a building in Stirot. The others landed in the Shar HaNegev Regional Council. The Air Force immediately hit back with a strike that killed five Hamas and one Islamic Jihad member. A Palestinian civilian not connected with either group was caught in the crossfire. The fallout from Vinograd continues. Knesset member Avigdor Yitzhaki resigned today after saying a week ago he would leave the government if Prime Minister Olmert did not. Yitzhaki is a member of the Kadima party. The party largely rallied around Olmert after the report was released. Earlier in the week, Omert accepted responsibility for failings of the Second Lebanon War in a speech to the Knesset. Meanwhile, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair had positive things to say about where things are headed in the Middle East. He told a conference today that Palestinians in the West Bank are meeting their commitments on the roadmap to peace. He used the seemingly more calm atmosphere of Nablus in the northern West Bank as an example of his point. Prime Minister Omer showing concern about the dollar. He plans to hold an emergency meeting with several government ministers to find a solution to what some perceive as a major problem. Many of Israel's exporting businesses are dollar-based, which means a lower dollar cuts into profits. At the same time, the shekel's strength against the dollar and other foreign currency makes imported goods cheaper. Stay tuned to InfoLive TV for an in-depth look at Israel's decision to sell the Kafir aircraft to Colombia, Plus, an exclusive interview with Unifil from Beirut. Details on smuggling across the border. Thanks for watching Info Live TV, Israel's first internet TV website, broadcasting in four languages from Jerusalem. Infolive.tv, live on your mobile phone. Do you want to keep ahead of the news and receive updates on what is happening in Israel? Infolive.tv offers you a unique service. Regular video news updates, free of charge, on your cell phone. To sign up, enter our website at www.infolive.tv and click on the mobile services banner. Today the whole world talks about Israel. But who broadcasts from Israel to the world in four languages? Live from Jerusalem, InfoLive TV, the first international Israeli television channel that operates 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Follow current events in Israel and the Middle East. Video features, interviews, news programs, and news briefs live as history unfolds. If you want a direct link to Israel, access infolive.tv.